Today on Bridges, we'll be talking about finding hope after pregnancy loss and infant loss. I am one in four. I am one in four. I am one. I am one in four. We are one in four. I was six months pregnant when we lost Nicholas. He will always be a part of us, and we will miss him every day. Hi, I'm Becky Nordquist. I've recently partnered with Music for the Soul to bring you the song Before We Said Hello. It is our hope to bind up the wounds of those who have experienced pregnancy loss and infant loss. We grieve the child who's living in our hearts but not a home. We say goodbye before we said hello. We want you to know that your baby's life matters and you are not alone. Today on Bridges, we're opening up the conversation about finding hope after pregnancy loss and infant loss. So my guest today is Becky Nordquist. And so she is an artist and she's a speaker and a songwriter. But even more importantly than all of that, she's a wife, a mom who has experienced these kinds of losses. And today we want to open up the conversation and help all of us to find the hope that we can find in Jesus Christ. Becky, thank you for coming to Bridges mm, today. Thanks so much for having me today. So I'm so glad that you put together, Becky, this devotional called Before We Said Hello, because I think for so many of us, women and men, you know that Infant loss and pregnancy loss can so much be mm -hmm. such a silent grief. It's something that we can't really talk about or when we try to that people may not really understand. And you certainly have your own story mm -hmm. and what God has, how he's helped you through this. So let's start there if we could. Mm, sure. Dave and I, my husband Dave, we experienced five pregnancy losses mm -hmm. and one stillbirth. We had a little so boy. Mm, thank you. Um, and the thing that was interesting that I found was when I had my very first loss, I had no idea what was going to come next. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know who to call. And then pretty soon as people came to know about our loss, then I had friends come forward that I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really alone, even though I had felt really alone. Mm -hmm and kind of shed a light then at how silent it is. In fact, one mother wrote me, a uh, private message to me on social media and said, you know, hey, welcome to a secret club. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about this, but there's a lot of us out here. And the statistic is one in four will experience a yeah. pregnancy or infant loss. And that's a pretty big statistic. I mean, you're looking at that's a large segment of the population, and I think Becky, just in my own experience, what heightens that silent grief and that secret mm. as the, the way the one woman put it is that I remember, um, so I've had three pregnancies. I had two pregnancy losses and, and one healthy baby. When I did share about the pregnancy loss, I always got such, it's not that people were mean, just, well, you'll have other children. Well, you know, that's God's way of just taking care of nature. There was probably something wrong. And, and the thing is, even if that was true, it's not helpful. Mm. So I think what that does is it teaches us just to be quiet mm -hmm. because then the thought is, well, nobody really understands and nobody gets this, so I'll just be quiet. But that grief doesn't go away. Absolutely true. You know, there's... Uh, 
many things as we started working on this project. Mm -hmm. I really felt like the enemy was coming against it. And I just like, Lord, why? You know, we're talking about pregnancy and infant loss. But see, our enemy is not all that creative. No, he's not. He uses the same tools, isolation, fear, guilt, shame. And so often we hear all those at least, like, well, at least you can have more babies, or at least you already have some children. Mm -hmm. And so then we feel a shame mm -hmm. associated with our grief. And then sometimes there's guilt associated with that because I'm still grieving. Maybe my faith isn't strong enough. I, why can't I get, why can't I just get over this? And people will even ask you, you know, why can't you just get past this? Because you don't. You learn to walk <laughs> right. forward with it, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone's grief journey is right. different. Right. Our ultimate, the most beautiful example of one thing, how sacred and important lament is, but also how to walk with people through it is Jesus. When he came upon Mary and Martha, you know, Lazarus had died. Mary and Bar Martha are going, where were you? Right. If you'd been here, this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. How many of us say the same thing? Absolutely. Right? Right. Lord, if you had heard my prayer, if uh -huh. you had heard my cries, mm -hmm. there's a lot of that in the book too. <laughs> if you, why? I don't mm -hmm. I want to understand why. But Jesus doesn't offer this quick band-aid answer. He doesn't sit there and quote scriptures. You know, what he does is he sees them. He sees the tears involved with grief. He stops everything doesn't say anything and he sits down yep. and he weeps he weeps with them mm -hmm. and he weeps for them because I really believe he wept for them too because this is never what was intended for us no. a perfect God never intended for a mother to hold her dead baby no. that is just not what he wanted no. and so I think Jesus in that moment also took in the brokenness and the fallenness of this world yeah. And so also, you know, it, it's a beautiful picture of just coming alongside of those who are grieving and just being present mm -hmm. and listening to what their need is in the moment. You know, it's okay to ask your friend, you know, hey, I want to be here for you. I've never experienced this mm -hmm. or I'm just not sure how to be here for you in this and just walk with them. Right. And that that's a perfectly wonderful thing to say to someone. I don't have words. I don't know what to say. How can I be helpful? I'm so sorry for your pain. I think some of the other issues, Becky, that you mentioned about, you know, saying to people, because this has been said, unfortunately, well, you know, if you would have just had enough faith, well, you know, mm. if you would have gone to a different doctor, well, if this would have happened, well, none of that is true, but even if it was true, it's absolutely not helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think for us to think, you know, when I think of that passage in the Bible, it talks about how all of us, even creation, that we're longing and we're groaning mm. to be with our Savior for His appearing, that this life in a fallen world does come with grief. And I don't think we get over grief. I think that God gives us gracious hope to walk through it to bear up under that pain and to help and to love one another. Um, it can develop compassion in us and just a connection with other people to just say, you know, Becky, I'm so sorry mm -hmm. for your infant loss and for your pregnancy loss. And I don't have to say anything else like why I think it happened and how God is going to bring good from it. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about the book. It's before we said hello. Tell me about the project and why you're so passionate about it. Well, it really wasn't even on my radar. <laughs> <laughs> this is so God, you know, because you go through these moments of you think you're heading down one path and mm -hmm. then it's like, whoop, we're going to turn this way now. You get these hairpin turns mm -hmm. in life, right? And it was just a, a providential meeting with Steve Seiler, who is the founder of Music for the Soul. And he actually wrote the song before we said hello. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met one night and a friend said, you need to hear her sing. And we both were very awkward and embarrassed in that moment because <laughs> for someone who has been around, he's got, you know, Dove Awards and songwriting. He's been around a long time. And your friend says, you need to hear yeah, her sing. And yeah, you're like, no, I don't think so. No. And, you know, he's going, oh, maybe she's got a good voice. Maybe not. You know, it's <laughs> because when you're kind of Nashville, you know, they hear that a lot. So, right. And he's probably right? thinking, I, I really yeah. don't want to do this. Yeah, yeah, it's so, so awkward. So how am I going to tell her? Nice voice. Right. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck to you. God bless. You know, but you know, so it really wasn't on the radar. And I went to a home concert, and afterwards, uh, he was discussing another project that Music for the Soul has about child sexual abuse, and that is part of my story as well. Mm -hmm. So I was really touched. Went up to him, and I just said, "Thank you so much for your do what you're doing, because his songs offer the space to just sit with your emotion." Yeah. And that's a crucial place for us, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, to not brush past it or shove it under the bed, but to allow those unanswered questions to sit for a while and wrestle that out in our faith with the Lord. And mm -hmm. um, so I just loved that. And I thanked him and uh, he said, have you recorded something? Have you ever recorded a song? And I had just done a demo uh, here in Nashville with a friend, uh, with a group that I'm involved with, Nashville Christian Songwriters. And... I handed that to him, and through that, the song that I'd written was out of our story of loss. Mm -hmm. And so I explained, and he, within an hour, he messaged me. He's like, I'm sitting in Chicago airport with tears. Uh -huh. You are the only person that can sing a song I just wrote. And that was before we said hello. Mm -hmm. I had started a song called Heaven's Playground. And so I ran that by him, and I just couldn't finish it. So then we brought in uh, Tony Wood, who is an amazing lyricist. And uh, he and Steve and I sat in Tony's living room, and we finished Heaven's Playground, which is the second song. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we were prompted by our publicist to write the book because she heard my story. She said, where's the book? And I said, well, we could do a devotional, but they had to be short because when you're grieving, it's right. difficult, if at all possible, to read, let alone speak the name of Jesus, right. depending on how deeply you're struggling. But, you know, also then there's stories of other people in the book, too. So that's kind of an all-encompassing. So when you get the book, you can also, you, the songs are with the book, so you can download the songs. So it's really a whole package. So if you want to gift something, some people gifting is their love language. So... Mm -hmm. You know, it feels good to have something in hand. And that was the idea behind that that whole process. And I, and I think, you know, when we want to comfort someone and we show up and we mm -hmm. offer that comfort and we pray to be able to have, hand them something that after we leave, mm -hmm. as they're comfortable, as yes. they have time, as they can to download those songs, maybe to read one devotional. I think you said it so right. If you're in a crisis grief, you're not going to read 24 chapters. Mm -hmm. You just don't, there's just not that kind of time or, or strength. So it's so nice that this is going slow and that it's being helpful in that way. We've got to take a break. Uh, we want you to stay with us. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk about this devotional called Before We Said Hello. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Today on Bridges, we're talking about finding hope after pregnancy loss and after infant loss and you know, as we talk about this and we take a look at this devotional called Before We Said Hello, um, if you have suffered pregnancy loss or infant loss, let's first say how very sorry we are for your loss and that our prayers are with you for God to comfort as you grieve. And Becky, I'm just so grateful that you would come today to share your personal story and really how God uh, divinely put this project together so that you could offer help, you know, to other women and men that are in mourning and in sometimes what we call silent grief over pregnancy and infancy loss. And so if you would share what was most helpful to you in your journey as you had a stillborn child and, and how many pregnancy losses was it? Five. Five. I'm just so sorry. That's what was most helpful to you in your journey so that if people are watching and they want to know what, what can they do? What would you say to that? Well, first, every journey is so individual, yeah. as you know. 
You know, we're all created so uniquely. So what God uses in my life may not be what he uses in your life mm -hmm. or anyone else's. Um, it was a lot of wrestling, I'll be honest. I mean, when you ask that question, I have to go, wow, I really need to think about what was really helpful. Yes. In the middle of it, I had some dear friends that allowed me to just work through the process mm -hmm. with the Lord. They knew me well enough that they trusted me to not abandon my faith, but they also um, were very gracious to allow me to work through it mm -hmm. and not preach at me or rush me. And that was a huge gift. I certainly wrote a lot. Like I said, I started writing Heaven's Playground at the graveside um, as we buried Nicholas. I mean, it was a cold, bitter cold January day. And there were just, it, there were feet of snow in Michigan um, during that time. And I think it was about three degrees. Um, and I stood out there and, you know, your human heart has a hard time reconciling putting your baby yeah. into the ground. And I just said, God, I need to see you in this. I need to know that you're here. I, I need to somehow see you working in this. I, I, I just need help here. Mm -hmm. And it was really kind of almost like a childlike prayer, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, I had come to a place where I knew that it was okay for me to pray like that mm -hmm. and just cry out to him, even if it's just like a little girl crying out to her daddy, mm -hmm. you know, and he um, was so gracious. He gave me this vision of this little blonde haired boy running through a field of flowers towards outstretched arms and those hands had nail scars. So immediately I knew who it was and just beyond Jesus was a playground. Mm -hmm. And there were children laughing and playing all over the playground. And it just gave such a comfort yes. to my heart, you know, to know that Nicholas was with the perfect father. He'd never know pain. And so beginning to write that song was certainly therapeutic, but really, um, the gift of being able to be honest in my relationship with God and ask him the hard questions and then having brothers and sisters that were alongside me, allowing me to do that. That's a gift. It is a gift. And I think when you talk about that prayer that you prayed that you, you know, God, I just need to see you in this. Mm -hmm. And you know, that can be for any of us, even if it's not infant loss or right. pregnancy loss, that to understand that God really is a good father mm -hmm. and that we don't have to have all of the answers and we can ask questions. And, you know, I've come to the place in my faith journey that I just realize on this side of heaven, I'm just never going to get all of my questions mm -hmm. answered. Right. There are things that have just happened and I trust by faith that God is somehow working a greater good. I don't know what that is. I don't know how that is, but I trust him. But I've also learned that I can't receive his comfort if I'm not honest about my pain. Right. If, if I want to cover that up from him or keep that from him or from a few safe others, I'm just not going to get the connection or the comfort that I need. And I think sometimes we can be our own worst enemy because we won't reach out to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said in, in this devotional book, before we said hello, this is uh, some of your writing, but other people share their stories. And I think that that's helpful. Maybe you could speak to that for a moment. Well, because it is so individual mm -hmm. and there are different phases of loss and, you know, there's men and women. So daddies are experiencing this loss yeah. too. And mm -hmm. boy, if women don't talk about it, guys <laughs> certainly don't, they certainly yeah. don't talk about it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it was really important that we have their story in there, but not just the grieving part, an element of hope and how they found hope in the moment. And, and it was just a, it's, it's a beautiful collection, just wonderful people that were willing to share and be real and honest because, you know, a long time ago I had a friend, uh, I was working through some other things and she said, wow, Becky, you're really angry at God. And I said, I am not. <laughs> what do you mean I'm angry with God? No way. She said, it's okay. He already knows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just that revelation of realizing that he hasn't left. Mm -hmm. No. You know, I didn't stand at that graveside alone. 
That's right. He was there. And you, you touched on something that was really, really important that I think we have to realize no matter what we're going through. And that is, you know, we walk on this earth, but really we are created for eternity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so things are going to happen here. And it says in the Bible, it says in this world, you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. But take your heart, take heart. Amen. You can stand on the promise that Jesus has already overcome everything we will face That's on this right. planet, everything. And, and as soon as we're ready and willing to relinquish our right to understanding why things happen yes. and the intricacies of why, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as we're ready to lay that down, you know, God picks up all those, those hard questions and those broken pieces and, you know, it's at that point that we enter a beautiful, sacred place with him. And, and that's not a place we can just enter into any other way, no. but through taking hold of his hand. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, then we rise above the cares of this world. Not that we don't grieve or we don't own the emotion of it, but we see a grander vision mm -hmm. for purpose and his purposes for us to draw him closer into our hearts that's right and grow deeper in us mm -hmm. and prepare us for all eternity yeah and he does work in all of our lives in mm. different ways it's you know various families go through different things in their journeys in in life but he never leaves us and the thing is Becky even if we got answers to the questions that we have. And I'll just speak for myself. I'm, I'm still not sure that I would agree that that should have happened, right? Right, right. Because I just can be stubborn. And mm. I just, I only see life from this small, limited perspective mm -hmm. that Monica Schmelter has. And I certainly came into, you know, my relationship with Christ in adulthood with certain number of expectations, right? right? Yes. And pregnancy loss was just not one of those. Exactly. Neither was any of the other heartbreaking mm -hmm. things that I've gone through. Oh, I, I just was so naive. I just thought, well, you know, if I pray hard enough and if I, mm. right, and if I'm obedient, then I'll just escape these X, Y, Z things because I wasn't taking into consideration the verse that you just shared. Mm. In this world, you will have trouble. Yeah. And so I think that if we can embrace that, not that we love trouble or grief, mm -hmm. but if we can embrace that that's a part of this journey. But there isn't anybody in this life that we love that we haven't been angry with. So, of course, mm -hmm. right, we're going to get mad at God because we're in a relationship with him and because we don't always understand his ways mm -hmm. and what he's doing. Oh, right. I mean, we can't. We always want... I say it's impossible for the finite mind to wrap around the infinite. That's right. Right? And it's it's that thing too, though. Maybe instead of embracing our circumstance, good or bad, we embrace who he is Amen. as we walk through them. Mm -hmm. Because who he is is the greatest treasure. Amen. And, and quite honestly, and some may not take this well, but to me at this point, what I see is, who he is to me, because he, he became the God of Becky, not just the God of Moses or Abraham right. or David, but through all the suffering, he became the God of Becky. Mm -hmm. And holding that is greater than holding anything, including all of those babies or anything else in this whole world. Mm -hmm. Holding on to who he is in it is the greatest treasure we could ever ever receive the side of heaven. Yes, and there's a lot of pain and a lot of grieving and a lot of tears yes. in what you just said mm -hmm. because we don't know that until we lose this, mm -hmm. this, and this. Yeah. And we go through these things that we think I could have never done that. Mm -hmm. But we got closer to him. We yes. became more acutely aware of his presence, mm -hmm. of his providential care, and of his goodness, mm -hmm. despite these losses and this grief. And I think this is so much a part of the Christian journey that we shrink back from because we want people to think, well, you know, just everything's good and he works it all out for our good. And he does. But there's pain involved in that journey. Oh, yeah. And our good isn't necessarily our agenda, <laughs> no. right? OK, if you've ever had toddlers, we know <laughs> that they have an agenda. They would like sugar morning, noon and night, mm -hmm. right? So, I would, too. Uh, well, but it's not OK, good. let's yeah. just be honest, you know. But yeah, I, I, you know, but that wouldn't be the best. And God says, you know, this might be good 
good, but I have what's best for you here. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel like it. And there's times that God doesn't feel like he's good. You know, right. God, you don't feel good. You feel cruel mm -hmm. in this. Yes. But, you know, mm -hmm. in that, as we lay down our agenda for life and how we want life ordered yes. and we lay down that control, mm -hmm. you know, it is just like the word says, you have to lay down your life yes. and lose it. And then you find it. And when you find it, mm -hmm. you find it in who he is and that his agenda and his plan and all the things that he can bring to us through the suffering and the brokenness of this world is so much better. And there's joy that you can't explain and there's peace yeah. that you can't explain. Wow. And people will say, how are you standing? And you yourself can only have one answer and it's that toddler answer. Jesus, you know, in Sunday school, how we, they're like, they ask a question and everybody's like, what's the answer? All the little kids say, Jesus, <laughs> that's the truth. And, and, you know, and I, I don't think, I mean, I think if I were watching this and I hadn't gone through all this, I'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. But I've lived it. <laughs> and I, you know what, you know what you know, right? Right. And that's right. just what I know right. is that and he I, is the answer. Right. And here's the thing, even if they think, well, okay, all right. The thing is that if grief finds us, mm this will be helpful then. Like we don't know mm. till we get there. Right. And I think that this faith journey, everything that you're talking about, laying down your life mm. for his way, that, that's painful, but there's joy. Mm. There's joy mm. if we can surrender to it and give up our own control freakazoid <laughs> stuff, right? Mm -hmm. There's joy to be found in that. And I'm just... I'm so grateful that you wrote this devotional before we said hello and that there's this musical component because um, we're almost out of time, but you really did this to help people in their losses and to be able to grieve. So thank you. Oh, thank you. It is an honor and a humbling privilege. Yeah. Well, it's just so good to meet you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for watching Bridges. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. He's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org.